everybody, this is Adam Gokesh here with Theo Chino outside the Sandra Day O'Connor Federal Courthouse in downtown Phoenix, Arizona. Theo here is the leader of the Stop the Bit license effort in New York, as well as a national Bitcoin freedom activist. And we just witnessed the sentencing hearing of Thomas Costanzo, also known as Morpheus, uh, Mor Morpheus Titania, uh, a friend of many people here in the Phoenix area, a longtime freedom activist, and the leading Bitcoin trader on local Bitcoins.com, at least according to the court. And if, if the government says it, it must be true. But yes, uh, certainly one of the leading uh, proponents, advocates, and traders of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and was uh, heavily involved with local Bitcoins here. Now, Theo, what we saw was he got 41 months. He's already done uh, 15 from my understanding. So just a little over two, uh, not quite a three and a half year sentence, three years probation with pretty much the most intense uh, pain in the butt, and I can say that from experience, kind of very, very highly supervised probation. Uh, are you surprised at the, the overall outcome today? Uh, yes, but uh, I was hoping it would get less time. It would get like time served, like everybody else in the Bitcoin world. So you were positively surprised, but not as much as you were hoping to be surprised. Correct. I mean, the government was asking for 10 years. I mean, we're talking 10 years for doing Bitcoin trade to be a Bitcoin trader, so that's too much to me. So the judge saw it. I mean, you saw you heard him. He's like, Mr. Cosanzo, I understand that you were pissed at the government and that you have learned in, in, in jail. And he even said, I, I wish under other circumstances you're a very interesting man to talk to. <laughs> you know, I, I, and, and having seen that judge before, I'm kind of like, Morpheus really got to him. Like, you know, this he said, I enjoyed. You use the word enjoy. I enjoyed reading your letter. I found it engaging and interesting, and and I was like, wow. He, you know, and and while I was while I was I was sitting there, there was something that that occurred to me about what Morpheus is doing, because part of me is a little bit surprised that he just sat there and took it all. And I mean, having sat there through the trial, having been in jail now for 15 months already, just. He just sort of stood there very stoically, right, all together. Yes, absolutely. I mean, he, uh, he has been studying stoicism in, <laughs> in jail, so he, he, he took it all in. And, I mean, he, he engaged the judge. I mean, the, I mean, the sentencing lasted two hours. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've been at Bitcoin sentence where it lasted 15 minutes. Yeah. And here, the judge was really engaged, seems to have understood what Bitcoin is. He also understood that the government was like in a bind where he, he had to give something to the government like, oh yeah, you, you're dealing with Bitcoin and you're doing drugs. We need to give you some punishment and I'm sorry to give it to you. You're going to take it for everybody else. And he said it, I mean, he, he said, I'm feeling bad to give it to you for everybody else in the Bitcoin community to prevent people to do bad things. Yeah, the judge was very deliberate and, and, and I, I, you, you you know, it's always you always look at you. It's kind of it's got to be a show. You know, it's it's all it's all smoke and mirrors. It's all like this illusion of authority and control. Um, but I did get a sense at least he cared enough to do this one right and to put the time in to consider all the points and hear out the defense properly. And and I want to give credit to to you especially Theo in this, but to everybody. You know, we had uh, we had about 20 supporters in court today. Yeah. And uh, I understand through like I was I was here at, at his first hearing, and I think one or two others uh, over the time. But I haven't been here for the whole trial. Uh, but that there's been a steady uh, flow through the courtrooms, and that there has been a steady amount of attention paid to this, which would lead to at least that kind of uh, careful precision in, in in handing down a sentence, right? I think so. I mean. The thing is, he went through a jury trial, so there is still appeals coming down the line. I mean, he didn't forfeit any of his appeal right, so the judge said it. I mean, uh, but he, the judge was very careful, and I am very surprised. I mean, other than that, I'm like, I feel I'm, I'm bummed. I mean, I wanted to see him out today. I wanted to go get a beer with him <laughs> because I'm tired yeah, to come to, yeah. to Arizona. Time, time served would have been nice. It would have been nice. But now he's going to go to a to a prison that is much less secure than what he has. Oh yeah, oh, no, this is this t Morpheus. For the people who don't know, um, I loved every time they brought up his rap sheet because it's like he's been a libertarian troublemaker his entire life, and I kind of wanted to point you know to the judge like when when someone like Morpheus is getting in trouble, 
it's for a good reason. It's to point out the illegitimacy of the system. And if anything, if the system wants to maintain its integrity, it needs to handle people like Morpheus very carefully. Yes. And and I want to point out uh, a couple of things that the government brought up. I made I made a few notes here illegally. I think as I pulled out my cell phone in the courtroom, right. Um, one of the things they used to try to justify a, a harsher sentence for Morpheus was that he used derogatory words when referring to banks and the government. <laughs> Any thoughts on that? Well, he, I saw a smirk from the judge, too. I mean, when they were like, uh, who doesn't do derogatory remark <laughs> against <laughs> banks? I mean, that, that even, yeah. even, even during the trial, the juror were laughing at that sentence when... The, the, they were trying to say, oh, he talks bad about the banks. Yeah, there, there were a couple of laughs from, from the, the peanut gallery today as well. And, and it, I, I liked hearing the judge say a number of times, well, Bitcoin is a legitimate currency. Well, if you're trading in Bitcoin or any other legitimate currency, like that was pretty cool. And at, at that point, was somewhat established by the case. There's at least one little positive thing to come out of this. Now, another thing they said was that they wanted him sentenced harshly in order to send a message to his supporters who photographed government witnesses and wore nullification shirts to try to get the jury to nullify uh, the laws here through their decision. But photographed government witnesses, Thea, what would you know about that? Well, actually, when uh, the UC they were talking about, Sergey, the Undercover uh, agent. The undercover agent that was uh, testifying why he got he got interested in in Thomas he said from New York he was interested of doing a trade with Thomas and so what I did is uh, when we were outside in the street outside the courthouse he went he went to lunch I went to lunch and I took a picture of him walking and I posted it on uh, on Twitter saying be aware this man is looking for Bitcoiner through uh, through um, through Western Union because Sal Manzi in Pennsylvania in Detroit they got him the same way Klein they got him the same way the the UC the undercover agent wanted to do trade through Western Union to get them to incriminate themselves so here I took a picture and I tweeted it on Twitter and <laughs> at the end of the trial when uh, the 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 guilty verdict was pronounced. They came to me and they say, why did you post uh, uh, Sergey's picture on the web? And, well, I mean, like I learned in New York, there is no expectation of, for, of Fourth <laughs> Amendment privacy rights. Because the police told you that. Yeah, because the NYPD has been telling me that for the last 10 years, there is no expectation of privacy in the street. So I figured that also work on the other side. So I took a picture, I tweeted it, and they mentioned it today. And it was like, guys. There was nothing illegal in doing that. Unfortunately, I feel bad for Sergey because... <laughs> Wait, why would you feel bad? Well, this, no. just Let him get justice. Well, I mean, I always feel bad when someone who loves to do his job, to get people to incriminate themselves, suddenly are assigned to a desk job. <laughs> that means the poor Sergey from Staten Island will be now stuck in a desk job and they cannot work outside because... That's what happened. And That's like feeling bad for a rapist because he got caught and locked up in jail, man. I mean, I don't, I, I, I understand. I, I, I appreciate the desire for sympathy, but I have way more sympathy for the victims of the government racket when it comes to being entrapped and set up on, on these charges. And I want to point out that this is a really important thing for people to understand about this is that Morpheus was set up, that he was just here in Phoenix. And yes, he's doing business under the table, of course, as this is right as a human being uh, to, to, to protect the privacy of his, his business transactions. But he was here, he was trading Bitcoin, and he was set up by undercover government agents, multiple undercover government agents in a long term effort over multiple years involving how many agencies were at the rate of his property? Three, uh, there was three group, DEA, IRS, FBI. And then, uh, and then the two local agencies. Yeah, so it's was five agencies total, right? About, yeah. the, about right. There was a lot of agencies. There's, there's, there's county and city cops involved as well for the raid, right? But anyway, my point is that we all need to be looking out for this. Anybody who cares about freedom uh, any, especially anybody who cares about freedom of Bitcoin, freedom of money, uh, you know, freedom of financial privacy. This is a hugely important front. And and what I what I was saying before about Thomas and what he's doing, he's 
he's standing there kind of stoically. I want to say taking it like a man, but no, he was just standing on the front line because he's always been on the front line. He says, you know what? They're going to come after me on the front line. I'm going to stand here. I'm going to stand up to them. I'm going to declare my innocence. We're going to go to trial. We're going to fight this all the way through, all the way through the sentencing. Like you said, we, we're, we're probably going to see some appeals coming out of this. But what he has done, he's not trying to hoot and holler and say, you know, get me on the front page of the newspaper. He's saying, but you know what? I'm going to take this one for the team because for all the energy that they have invested in him, they are not capable of messing with people like us. And I very much appreciate that on a personal level for Morpheus doing that. So I want to immortalize our friend Morpheus here with something. And, and tell me what you think about this. If you think this is something that we can make make a thing for the Bitcoin community as a whole. But the Morpheus rule, if you're trading in crypto, if someone mentions illegal activity, you have to say, sorry, you broke the Morpheus rule. You know, this could be illegal. I'm a, th this Bitcoin deal, this particular Bitcoin deal is off. I'm sorry, because it could be an agent. And this is the thing. And it's very appropriate that it's called Morpheus because we're talking about agents coming out of the matrix here to mess with free people. That's what this is. So, yeah, the Morpheus rule is if you're doing Bitcoin or any kind of cryptocurrency trades with people, you don't mention any other activity relating to that at all that could even possibly be illegal because you will be creating a liability for the people you're doing business with. And also... If you know what they, if you think you know what they do, don't ask them to buy their product either, because basically yeah. that's what happened. I mean, they kind of put Morpheus together because he went to one person who bought Bitcoin for, from him, who never told him what he did, but he bought the product from him using Bitcoin. And that's what they got him with to tie him up, saying you knew what he was doing because you went to him when you wanted some ayahuasca. Yeah, now, and we're not we're not arguing about the the legitimacy of any of these laws. Of course, no victim, no crime. All the drug laws in this country are bullshit. They're illegitimate. That's not what we're talking about. And what I'm working on is I would like a discussion, a national discussion, on those drug laws. Well, um, that's uh, just separate, separate from all that. I know, I know, I know. That's a big part of what we're fighting for. It's a big fight, but here, the courthouse, this is not the place. They use the drugs. Have, yeah. That you have that discussion. Yeah. The discussion was whether or not the rule is there, and Morpheus learned so much about the rules. Yeah. I mean, it was impressive at one moment. Did you see when her, his lawyer just grabbed him at, with the chair <laughs> and like come here yeah, and yeah. like hey, and even the marshal were like. Holy crap, what, did, what just happened that they grabbed Morpheus and like rolling him over, read that paper, and the judge was like, do you understand? And Morpheus go, yes, I understand. I was present when I participated on my defense. I mean, Morpheus was not an idle person. He was there participating fully to his defense. So I give it to him like 150%. Yeah. And so it's, it's not just drugs, although that is the big excuse that they're using anything illegal don't break the morpheus rule right don't anything break the morpheus illegal. rule all right i mean yeah any, anything like that could be illegal like i'm gonna buy i'm gonna buy a car and i'm gonna go five miles over the speed limit oh hey you broke the morpheus rule right but theo bigger picture here what do you think are the implications of this case lessons learned well the implication of the case is uh they got their case now we think that anyone going to be indicted on this on money laundering on bitcoin will most likely get four years so that's what they wanted to show, that anyone doing bad thing with Bitcoin will get four years in jail. Uh, so just to be clear, you're saying that the government has established a very negative precedence with this, that they can mess with local Bitcoin type traders and they can set them up relatively easily. And now they know exactly what lines they have to cross to set people up. And exactly. they know that they can get someone about four years. Exactly. And if they break the Morpheus rule, they'll get their four years. Now, the other side of the coin is if you heard at the beginning, the judge says he was found guilty of five charge of money laundering for, for hiding the proceed, but he was found not guilty of five laund uh, money laundering for not reporting to the government. And that he was found not guilty. If you remember at the beginning, he was found not guilty for not filing the paperwork. So that's another win for the other side. General tax freedom. Well, tax freedom, reporting, banking, reporting, all that stuff, the government still has to prove their case. Yeah. And so now it's down to our friend, um, uh, Note Father, who lives in Las Vegas and whose trial is coming up. Morgan Rockwell. Morgan Rockwell, whose trial is coming August 21st. 
in San Diego. San Diego, if you can be there. Yeah, you have to be there. And August 21st is going to be very interesting because it's what they were arguing in Morpheus' trial back in January. So, Theo, I want to thank you for, for getting everybody here and for all the support that you've uh, offered for our friend Thomas. Um, it Thomas will, became my friend over the course of, the, of this thing. I mean, write to Thomas, write him, send him a letter, tell him you know him, you heard about him, because the 20 months that come are going to be the hardest. So, write to Thomas. I don't know. If, if I know Thomas, he's going to be having fun converting guards to, to libertarianism, converting yeah, inmates, course. passing my book around because he's going to sneak. Yeah. He's going to find a way to sneak it in. But, but Theo, for all of this, so for the, the, the Rockwell case, or the Raccoons case, by, to use his legal name, um, for everything else that you're working on, are there any websites uh, for the information about how to reach Costanzo in jail? Uh, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Well, I'm putting all that on abolishthebitlicense.org. So abolishthebitlicense.org has all the information about every case going on in the United States, even in New York, everywhere in the United States. Keep the Bitcoin free, y'all. Thank you very much, Theo.